Engineers at Fukushima Daiichi are working on the first phase of an amphibious plan to stop the flow of radioactive water. They've started the operation to build a massive ice wall underneath the site, but the project is being met with concerns from the public over its safety. NHK World's Noriko Okada explains. Engineers have begun the first task in a massive project to construct an ice wall at the plant. They've started digging tunnels for pipes that will be used to inject coolant. This is an important step to reduce the amount of contaminated water. We will carefully conduct this operation. Once completed, frozen soil will stretch about 1.5 kilometers around crippled reactor buildings. They will use some of the 400 tons of groundwater that flows beneath the facility every day from nearby mountains. Crews will insert pipes into the soil and constantly run coolant through them. The aim is to hold back groundwater, preventing it from seeping into buildings where it becomes contaminated. Officials expect to stop almost all groundwater from getting in once the wall is completed. But the project efficiency has sparked a debate. Critics point out the high cost and the risks. They argue there has been no precedent to build an ice wall of this scale and length. The wall is expected to last decades. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority will be carefully monitoring the wall's construction. We need to verify if it really works or not. We also must study to make sure the ice wall does not have a further impact on the entire situation. The regulator has asked Tokyo Electric Power Company executives to gather and file more information proving the plan will work. Last month, engineers conducted a test on a smaller scale. They filled pipes with minus 30 degrees Celsius coolant, creating an underground wall. Company officials say the experiment was a success. We have confirmed a shielding effect by the construction of a frozen wall. They aim to start freezing soil by next March. But officials with the country's nuclear regulator haven't authorized the entire plan yet. They are still trying to find out if there is any negative impact that the wall of ice will have on the environment. People living near a nuclear plant in southwestern Japan are fighting to keep the facility from going back online. They say the plant in Kagoshima Prefecture is not earthquake resistant and could leak radioactive substances. 23 people are seeking a temporary injunction with the Kagoshima District Court. They're demanding that Kyushu Electric Power Company not restart the facility. The plaintiffs say they filed for the order as nuclear safety regulators have prioritized the inspection of the Sendai plant. Kyushu Electric officials say they'll study the contents of the filing. They carried out an investigation after checking nearby underground faults and say the plant is safe. This month, a court in central Japan ordered the operator of another nuclear plant not to restart two of its reactors. It said their safety measures were inadequate. The operator has appealed the ruling. held a rally in central Tokyo to oppose the restart of a nuclear power plant in southern Japan. The Sendai plant in Kagoshima Prefecture could be the first to return online under stricter safety standards. All of Japan's 48 reactors at 16 commercial nuclear plants are currently offline. The demonstrators have been holding rallies every week near the Prime Minister's office. The Nuclear Regulation Authority is in the final phase of safety screenings for the plant. All Japanese reactors have to meet the stricter standards introduced last year in response to the 2011 Fukushima accident. I can't understand why nuclear plants have to be restarted. All the reactors in Japan should be scrapped. 
The government should listen to people's opinions. I want the government to put priority on people's lives rather than focusing on the economy. The organizers say about 10,000 people took part in the demonstration, but police say they counted only about 1,300 participants. People who were forced to evacuate their homes after the 2011 accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant say they're skeptical of the government's waste disposal plan. Officials want to build short-term storage facilities for radioactive soil and waste in two towns near the plant. But the residents say the waste will be there forever. Officials from the Environment Ministry briefed about 400 residents from the towns of Futaba and Okuma. The crippled nuclear plant is situated in the two towns. The officials said they intend to acquire 16 square kilometers of land in the area to build facilities for the contaminated soil and debris. They said the compensation for the land will be based on prices not much less than those before the nuclear crisis. The officials also said the government will legislate that the storage plant will exist for no longer than 30 years and that the nuclear waste will be buried outside Fukushima Prefecture. The residents said the storage facilities will harm the town's image and make it difficult for them to sell farm products from the region. They also said no other prefectures will accept being the final storage site for the nuclear waste, even if the government had such a plan. The officials hope to start bringing in contaminated soil and debris from next January. A town located near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has reopened its local government office. Officials want to lay the groundwork for the further future return of evacuated residents. About 20 Naraha town officials returned to their old offices on Monday. The municipal administration has been operating at a nearby city following the nuclear accident over three years ago. The mayor announced last week that they aim to allow residents to return home in about a year's time. I would like to ask everyone to work hard. I want Naraha town to become a model of recovery from the disaster. Staff members are now stationed at the town hall to give residents advice on daily matters. They'll also supervise data monitoring at locations where radioactive materials have been removed. A survey by the central government in January showed that about 40% of the residents wish to return. However, people are still worried about radiation exposure and further problems at the crippled plant. ゼロポイント六五マイクロシーベルトパワーです。ゼロポイント六五マイクロシーベルトパワーは胸の高さで零点一点二一マイクロシーベルトに跳ね上がりました。On the thirty-first day of May year twenty fourteen. The Ose River Hometown River Tomita Waterfront Public Space of Koryama City, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. Eighteen Rokugo Microsievert Power is zero point six five Microsievert Power. Or a Mune no Takasa de Eighteen Eighteen Nichi Microsievert Ni Hane Agari Masta. The monitoring figure is jumping up on this place. Eighteen six seven microsievert power. Zero point six two microsievert power. Eighteen six seven microsievert power.
More and more firms are focusing on water-related businesses like purifying industrial waste or water waste. The world's biggest trade fair highlighting the latest technologies in the industry is underway in Singapore. A record 850 companies and organizations from all over the world are taking part in the Water Expo, which is held every two years. Some are showcasing know-how to turn seawater into fresh water on huge ships. Others are displaying devices for cleaning industrial uh, water waste with the use of microorganisms. From Japan, about 30 companies and organizations are participating. We're hoping to be able to meet the needs of local clients by using our experience and technical know-how and expand our business. Demand for water-related equipment is strong in emerging nations. The market is now led by European companies that are capable of building and managing large facilities. services have resumed in areas designated as evacuation zones in Fukushima Prefecture following the nuclear accident in 2011. An 8.5 kilometer stretch of the Joban line connecting Tatsuta and Hirono stations had been out of service for more than three years. Most areas along the section are still designated as evacuation zones and only daytime entry to these areas is permitted. But the railway company decided to resume train runs after confirming that radiation levels have been lowered thanks to decontamination efforts. I have been waiting for this day for a long time. Town officials in the zones hope the resumption of train services will help speed up reconstruction. Business leaders in Japan are tapping people with disabilities to fill vacant jobs. They're adapting work environments to meet their needs. Nearly 3.7 million people in Japan live with a physical disability, and about the same number have some form of mental or psychological condition. An increasing number of companies hope to benefit from the individual talents of such people. This subsidiary of a recruitment agency has 80 employees. 35 have some form of mental or cognitive disorder, ranging from schizophrenia to depression. Their work involves inputting data and helping with administrative tasks for the parent company. The workflow is designed to prevent any feeling of isolation and to provide a supportive environment. Employees are encouraged to communicate with one another. When a task is completed, everyone shares a sense of accomplishment. People here understand all the different aspects of my condition. It allows me to work without imposing too much stress on my body. Employing someone with a severe physical disability can present an even more difficult challenge. Ayako Nakamura works from home for a major corporation. A permanent disorder known as cerebral palsy limits her ability to move and use her hands. She types with her nose and chin. Nakamura makes business cards and teaches other employees with special needs how to use computer programs. Forty of them commute virtually from home. At any point in time, Nakamura can see the company office on her screen. It allows her to maintain a sense of belonging. I'm very happy to know that more people with disabilities are finding employment opportunities. Group meetings take place in a virtual environment. Every employee is connected to the network and can communicate with colleagues through a webcam. The application is launched from the desktop. The host of the meeting can determine who has access to the conversation. Thanks to this system, the work environment remains quite similar to a regular office.
Many technical experts with outstanding skills live in rural areas. Thanks to this system, we can hire them even if their condition prevents them from coming to work. Experts say this trend benefits society as a whole. The Japanese population is aging and the workforce is dwindling, so corporations are looking at people with disabilities because they're starting to realize that with proper training and an appropriate workload, these people can also contribute to the company's stability. Some people with disabilities are even launching their own companies. Hisamu Sato and Takuya Matsumoto both suffer from a serious form of muscular atrophy. They started a design company in 2011. Online orders for web page layouts and business cards are coming in from around the country. A physical disability can lead a person to develop unique characteristics, a particular talent or competence. We want to show that companies can derive significant advantages from such a person. At this point, the two partners don't have enough money to put someone else in charge of sales or advertising. Despite the hurdles, they're determined to continue expanding their business. For Sato, Matsumoto and millions of others in Japan, the key to better integration is to shift people's perception from their disability to their potential. Well, it's not unusual to see parents help their kids on swings and seesaws at neighborhood playgrounds. Now robots are getting in on the fun. <laughs> Engineering students from more than a dozen Japanese universities tested their skills and creativity in a robot contest organized by NHK. The theme of this year's competition was a salute to parenthood. Each of the 18 teams brought a pair of parent and child robots to the contest in Tokyo. Two teams squared off at a time to see who could steer the robots fastest through obstacles in a mock park. The parent robot had to help its child ride a seesaw, climb a jungle gym, and navigate two other types of playground equipment. They had to do all that in under three minutes. Two robots from the Nagoya Institute of Technology turned in the best time. The team is now getting ready to compete in August in the Asia-Pacific Robot Contest in Pune, India. In Japan's northeastern prefecture of Yamagata has a new home. The facility holds the Guinness World Record for housing more kinds of jellyfish than any other aquarium. Visitors were eager to see the new Kamo Aquarium in the city of Tsuruoka on the Japan Sea Coast. They lined up from early Sunday morning. The new aquarium is 60% larger than the old one next door. 50 kinds of jellyfish as well as various local fish are on display. One window with a diameter of 5 meters drew the biggest crowds. Visitors can enjoy watching 2,000 moon jellyfish swimming in an ethereal atmosphere. The aquarium was surprisingly big. It's nice that we can enjoy many kinds of jellyfish. I want to come back as often as possible with my children. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.